So Erica, thank you so much for volunteering <laughs> to help me with this exercise to You're show welcome. everybody how to use loving guidance, which is our first way to get out of a power struggle. So how old are your children? Uh, 15 and nine. Awesome, great. So this, we'll pretend like this is your nine-year-old, I think. And, well, you're gonna be you, but just keep in mind like you're nine years old. And one of your jobs is to have the trash out every night by eight o'clock. And right now it's 8.20. <laughs> and you're watching one of your favorite programs on TV. There's your remote. <laughs> and you haven't taken the trash out yet. Okay. So the first way I'm gonna do this is the ineffective way. The way that doesn't usually work very well, just to make a few points. And then I'll redo it with our tool called Use Loving Guidance. Okay, so you're watching TV, it's 8.20. You're supposed to have that trash out by eight o'clock. <sighs> Erica, why isn't there trash out yet? It's supposed to be out at eight o'clock. Oh, mom, come on. No, I, I want it out now. Cartoon. You're supposed to have it at eight o'clock. Now get that trash out. Give me that. Mom, <laughs> mom, get that trash out. I want fair. the trash out right now. It's not get fair. that trash out. I don't want, no, no, I gotta watch. <sighs> okay, stop. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. So, were you going to take the trash out? No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So she wasn't even going to do it. So what did I look like there? You looked insane. Okay. And we call this crazy mom. Crazy mom is what happens to us when our kids don't do what they're supposed to do. We have a crazy mom attack or crazy dad attack. So what do you think was driving me to become crazy mom there? It's just lack of communication back and just frustration. Okay, so frustration. Frustration's a little light though. I mean, that really shouldn't cause me to come unglued, right? I mean, you never know. It's like you could have had a stressful day and then it just all piled up to the trash not being out. Right, and then we lose it. <laughs> yeah. And so what do you think my motivation would be to become crazy mom feeling wise? Like, what do you think I'm feeling? And what do you, you know, when we become, when we have a crazy mom attack, I want to kind of get what the bare motivation is to that. It's, it's really a lot of anger and frustration, and you just want somebody to just listen to you and do what you ask them to do the first because, time. Because if they don't, what happens? Well, it gets really awkward because you can't, you can't communicate with your kids when they don't listen to you, and then, and when they don't do what you ask them to, it feels like they don't respect you. So it's kind of a slap in the face. So it's like you don't feel like you have a authority. Exactly. So I think what's at the root of all crazy mom behavior is our fear of losing our parental authority. If I don't get her to do what she's supposed to do here right now, it means I don't have any authority over her and she's gonna go out and run amok, you know, or do some horrible stuff and it'll be all my fault because I'm a bad parent. And so, to me, it's that fear that drives us to keep pushing and keep screaming and throwing the remote and doing all the crazy stuff that happens when we have a crazy mom attack. So what were you learning about being responsible there? Um, well, one, if you take out the trash one time, you don't get crazy mom. That's, <laughs> a, that's always a high point. <laughs> Nobody okay. wants crazy mom. Even crazy mom doesn't want crazy right. mom. Um, but when somebody's forcing you to do something, it doesn't feel like you're getting anything out of it. It's just like a, it really is a chore and there's nothing good that comes out of somebody who just feels like they're forced to do something. And I was screaming there, and were you gonna do it? No, because <sighs> then I don't hear you. When you're yelling at somebody, <laughs> they don't hear you. So the very thing driving me to become crazy mom, which is my fear of losing my parental authority, is what I created by screaming at her like that. I lost my parental authority. She wasn't gonna do this yeah. at all. Look at her. <laughs> and there's a smile, the joy of opposing. We already talked about that. Okay, great. So I'm gonna do this a little differently this time. That's your remote. That's the TV. It's 8.20. You're supposed to have the trash out by eight o'clock. And let's see what a tool called Use Loving Guidance might look like differently this time. Okay, okay so you're watching TV. Two minutes and then I'll take off the trash. No. You're pissing me out. Okay, okay, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Okay, great. So why did you do it there? Or why do you work out at <laughs> Yeah, True, and, and creep out can work one or two times. It does work, it's very effective. Um, but why else? But it, it was more of like, you're just waiting for me to catch on to what I did wrong and fix it myself without you just pounding me about it, which like, it's very much more um, effective when you do it. So it's kind of like a conversation between the two of us without actually using words. So then you don't have to worry about anger or anything like that. You just get a look. It's so funny. She just said, she used the word conversation and I didn't even talk there. Exactly. I mean, that is so interesting that you would, you would use that word. So what, what would you say the feeling motivating you to do it might have been? And there's probably a few of them, but let's talk about what they were. Um, my first one was just so I can get on with what I was doing. Right, and that's that's you, always yeah. the, the first thing. Um, the second thing would be, all right, you look very happy, but I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you try to negotiate for a second. But like, what did you feel? Like, what was that feeling? Motive? Well, first of all, me doing this, how does that feel in general? That's fine. It's very comforting, very soothing. Comforting, soothing. So I was motivating her for, through com being comforting and soothing, and sometimes people will say being feeling loved. Yeah. You know, so feeling loved. So number one, I motivated her through love. And then what was the feeling that you had when you realized you hadn't done what you're supposed to do? Um, it was more so of a oops. Um, can I can I negotiate with this? No. Okay. Let me see how I can do this without getting into actual trouble. Then it's like you're not mad, and I don't want to push you to where you're mad. Okay. So, so all of those words sound like guilt to me. A little bit. Okay. Good. <laughs> and this is healthy guilt because did I make you feel guilty? No. I didn't. It's so where was that guilt coming from? It's an internal guilt. It's an internal guilt. This was her sense of integrity. This is her internal sense of right or wrong. I call it in little kids their inner Jiminy Cricket. All kids are born with this. When we handle situations like this, like I did the first time becoming crazy mom, we actually rob our children of honing their own integrity. We rob them of learning their sense of right or wrong. So in this case, I created space, or I created room for you to feel bad because you did do what you're supposed to do. That's how we feel when we're out of integrity. And I also was patient, very patient, so the motivating through love and through using your own sense of right or wrong. So I was honing your integrity. I was creating space and room for you to do what you're supposed to do. That makes sense. Yeah. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. I do nine year as well. <laughs> <laughs> now I could go through and do the show this stepwise. Do you want to do you want me to show you like what the steps were that I sure. did? Okay. So the first thing I did to use loving guidance is I entered the situation calmly. And what was I not doing? Talking. Yes. No words. Remember, words fuel power struggles. Words are the fuel of power struggles. So anytime we use words, it's a potential trap to get into a, a two-way power struggle with our child, okay? So enter the situation calmly, no words. I got on her level, and then what did I do? Smiled and started rubbing. <laughs> Smiled and started rubbing your back, and I was making eye contact, okay? I was making direct eye contact. This is telling you that you're important. This is saying that you matter. It's that feeling powerful, that need that we need to help our children get met through appropriate ways rather than inappropriate ways by giving our kids eye contact they feel important they feel powerful so they're like okay I matter she's listening so all three of these things are really important the eye contact the smile and the words and then what did I do just waited <laughs> yeah and so those were nonverbal signals so in this case because it was the trash I was glancing to where the trash was and I was looking at my watch so those were the signals that I was giving. And I was really patient there. She took quite a while. Some kids will just jump up and do this. It's not my kid. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some kids it takes, this probably, how long do you think that was that it took you to do it? What, about 45 seconds? Okay. Yeah. And it could have been, it could have been a minute. Yeah. It could have been 58 seconds. <laughs> but she did it. And she did it because it was the right thing to do. She did it because she felt bad because she didn't do what she was supposed to do. She did it because she felt loved. And she didn't want to create a conflict with me or tension with me for no reason because I was being so loving. So great job. Thank you. Thank you. Now I know how to deal with my son when he has to take out the trash tomorrow. That's right. <laughs> Perfect.